Welcome back to another video of Smith Fishing Outdoors. And today, we're going over some secret baits. Rich, what's the secret bait we're going over today? Well, it's not so much a secret bait. It might be to you younger guys, but to us older guys from back when, and Jason, your dad can relate to this, back in the late 70s, even the what, Jason, 80s? Even, yep. even the 80s, you know, we used this is the, some of the baits that we used to fish you know everybody talks about you know fishing rubber baits but uh a lot of people aren't aware of the other rubber bait and this is what this is called these are these are called creatures the other rubber baits the other, the other rubber, rubber baits, baits. <laughs> you know what's amazing a, a lot of younger people today and yeah. we were just talking about this in the boat you had never seen these before no. But in our day, and your dad can attest to this, this bait, these baits here accounted for a lot of big muskies. And somewhere along the line, they got lost, didn't they, Jason? They got lost in the trends of all the other big baits. And, Deuces and... Yep. Yeah. And exactly. uh, they're still work. And, you know, last year I caught some fish on them and... and um, I think I threw them up once last year. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then the you caught one, so I started to throw more. But here's here's the key factor with these things. You know, they now you know they, they do they, they're at their best in the late fall. But when you're fishing in deep clear lakes where you've got some, you know, some you know real steep breaks, you know, you know, deep weed lines, you got, you know, your the edges of your you know of your rock piles or sandbars and stuff like that. Yep. If maybe even you're fishing maybe in, in, in uh, you know like rivers, you know, the Chippewa River and stuff, and there's and there's current and there's breaks, these baits work extremely well. The key thing is they're very simple. You know, they're very simple to fish with. There's just a couple of different ones. I mean, there's a lot of different creatures, but there's just a couple of different creatures that we used to fish or I used to fish. Now, you know, as, as your dad mentioned, you know, they excel in the, in the fall period, but even like in the, in the springtime, we would start with a little bait like this. This is, this here is a lizard. Originally, this bait was made by a company by, by, that was called Flip Tail uh, Lures, but you know I think today pretty much all these creatures that you are that are available today are still are all made by one guy, and that would be Moore's Lures, and they're up in Woodruff, Wisconsin, and he basically bought all these companies, and and to this day he's still manufacturing all these baits, including the jig heads, you know that you can buy for them. That's crazy. So, yeah, well, but he was, you know, he's in his 80s. He's a, he's a he's a healthy 80 year old, oh. but you know, he, again, they've caught a lot of fish on these. This is a bait we would start out in the like late spring, early fall. So we were talking earlier, you know, and we were fishing in in a in a one of those secret lakes that you like to fish, and we were talking about how you could see the muskies up shallow. Yeah. A lot of times, what we would do is we would cast this lizard. And we would take and we would put that lizard out in front of fish, let the lizard, you know, fall. Now this here, this here is a swimmer. All right. So. Well, the first of all, the, the, the baits that we've got here, Fisher. Yep. Okay. You'll notice the first bait we have. I'm going to let you pick them up. How's that? Yep. All right. Um, Which the one first bait, up? The first bait, you know, we're going to start with the season. First bait that you're, that you're picking up right now is a, is a seven and a half inch lizard. Uh, we definitely prefer the yellow baits, you know, just because in the springtime you're fishing dark water. We have a tendency to like those brighter baits. The head that's on that bait right now is a swimmer head. So what we would do with that, it basically allows you to swim the jig. And what you would do, you would cast that jig out, let it settle to the bottom. If you've got fish located within the given area, we'd let it sit there. And then after that, then we'll crank it two or three times. And then we'll let it settle, settle back down. When that jig sets down, that tail just sit there and it wags back and forth, mm -hmm. just back and forth when it's sitting there. And then we'll take and crank it, crank it, you know, two or three times again, and then we'll let it settle back down. So that's how we re we, we would retrieve that bait. Now, the jig head next to it also has a swimmer head, 
and that is one of your dad, you know, baits that your dad pulled out. So you can see your dad's in that age group that is used to these. That's a double tail. And I think, you it was know, a most. Jack's jigs. It's with a Jack's jigs. From heads. Milwaukee. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Did you get that uh, creature from there as well? Mm hmm. So you were fishing with this bait. And what's funny is you, you, when your dad and I first talked about this, you know, we were, you know, he pulled that right out. He mm -hmm. had one of those rigs. Probably you didn't even know that, did you? You never no. fished one of I, those. When I was guiding down south, I had customers from, from uh, Rockford. Sure. And those Rockford customers were catching 40, yep. 50, 60 muskies in the fall yep. jigging with these jigs. He's right. He's right. Think about that. That's just, 40, 50, 60 muskies a year. That's just mind-blowing. Exactly. In, in a couple months. But that doesn't look like much, does it, Fisher? No. But sometimes it doesn't take a whole lot in order to, to catch a muskie. Yeah. You know, baits are nothing more than tools. Yep. And there's a place for your topwaters and your bucktails and your, your gliders and your jerk baits and your rubber. You know, your bulldogs and, and your medusas, they all work good, but there are times, especially in pulse frontal conditions. Am I right about that, Jason? Yep. In, in pulse frontal conditions, you can't beat, you know, these baits right here. Yep. Same thing in the, in the, in the late when spring, early summer. When you're out dragging suckers and it's 40, 35 degree water temps right down there. Yep. The great time to be tossing a jig. And that's when we like these. This is probably the most common jig. You know, in the in the, like I said, in the late spring, early summer, I would fish, you know, the smaller lizard and possibly a double tail. When do you like fishing that double tail? Uh November actually. You do like fishing that double tail. Because it's got a really double gives it a slow fall. Yeah, it's it kinda does. like You're it's right. kinda like a, a, a a, a double dog, a, a, you know, a double bulldog. Sure. I mean, those things always were better in the fall because they could, they fall slow. There, see? Yep. Yeah. What do you think of this so far? Interesting. You know, you never, you never even thought about this. Nope. The most common creature that I fish is a creature spin. And this bait was first, this bait here was first made by a man by the name of Gene Curtis, Curtis Creatures. And he was one of the original guys from the Rockford area that had transplanted up to northern Wisconsin and uh, started making the Curtis Creature. And I think eventually uh, Gene moved down, you go ahead and hold on to that, uh, moved down to uh, Florida fishing for redfish and then Dick Moore continued making the, the you know the creature spins and that's as we know them. It's got a little bit different head on it. It's, it's also a swimmer head but it's what happens with that type of head you know when you cast that bait we're again we're casting it out yeah we're letting it settle and then we're cranking it three cranks and letting it settle. But when that head, that type of head, when it settles, the bait actually quivers. It wobbles back and forth as it as it hovers, as it, it's it hovering towards the bottom. And then we'll tank and crank it again. Your blade kicks in, just like a bucktail, yep. and it'll start spinning. And a lot of times, most of the time, the, when the fish hit this bait, they'll hit it on the fall. All you'll feel, just like when you're when you're worm fishing, yep. you'll be cranking, you'll let it, you'll kill it. All of a sudden, you'll feel a thump. Yep. And then you set the hook. Matter of fact, anytime you feel that, any kind of movement on that jig, you know, on that creature spin and or the lizard, you set the hook. Because most, most of the time, you're either going to have a big muskie or a decent sized muskie, a northern pike, even a big bass and or even walleyes. You've got a lot of nice five, four to six pound walleyes on them as well. So we most of the time when I fish this bait, I fish, you know, I fish a creature spin because I'm going to fish this bait uh, in in the in the late summer early fall as well into the fall but you know when their lakes are turning over and you're fishing this on the ins inside edge of the weed line yep. these fish will kill this thing really? the other one here is the big giant curly tail and that bait there we didn't fish it as much but the same reason that your dad was using this twin spin, mm -hmm. twin tail, we would use that bait Falls in the fall slow. time. Fall slow. That big tail just sitting there wagging back and forth. Most of the time with with any of these creatures as far as colors, you know, I got a chartreuse, but most of the time we would fish a white or a black or a yellow. The thing of it is these are not very hard baits to fish at all. 
And actually, when we were starting to play here a little bit, yeah. I was watching you, and you just dived right in. You don't miss a trick. No. You don't miss a trick. You you have no problem with fishing, I think, any musky bait you pick up. I just told this kid to just, here's, here's how we retrieve it, and he and he did it better. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's, it's a bait that a lot of people aren't aware of and have forgotten and have forgotten. And a lot of us old timers are getting so old that we just kind of, we just don't throw them. Yep, they're still available in musky shops though. They still are. Yeah, you can still find some, but if you know, if people have a hard time finding these, they can, again, they can look up Moore's Lures and you'll find all the jig heads and you'll find all these creatures all right online. All they gotta do is look up is Moore's Lures. I think it's moreslures.com. So what's the setup that you like when you work to work these? I mean. Yeah. Well, I think you, you know, it's funny how when we, we started this, your dad went right to the rafters and pulled out his old faithful creature rod. Yep. He had it, mm -hmm. you know, this, and it's really simple. Basically it, it's a 4,000 or a 3,000 size spinning reel. Exactly. And, it's, and the spinning reel makes a spinning rod, a heavy spinning rod makes it work a lot better. I, yes. I think it is. I to agree it. with you hundred percent. Yep. So this one here, I think was what? Seven foot? Seven foot. Yeah, seven six, I think, with a. Uh, but you cut it off. I cut a little bit off because I it just you know, the, the rod butt would stick in the armpit a little bit too much, so I dug dug it out a little bit. Short yeah, it. some of the guys that are liking longer rods. Vexen makes a a spinning rod that uh, you know is eight foot long. Mm -hmm. It's an eight foot heavy, and it seems to work very well. That's probably today the more modern rod model that you could find that would do a good job as creature fishing. Your dad had this in the rafter. Yeah, So I that know. tells you well, something. I caught fish with it last fall. Yeah. You remember that. I watched you using this jig right here, <laughs> and you were hopping, and I'm like, I'm like, wait, you got one? And I'm like, what? <laughs> On that little thing? The thing of it is, isn't that amazing? Yeah. You sit there and told your dad, you got a fish on that little thing, that little jig. Yeah, the water temp was 37. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These little jigs, you know, here's the key thing. If you notice these two, the 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 lizard and this twin tail. Yep. Is and this is a good rule of thumb. These three baits right here, you want to fish in cold water and or post frontal conditions. If you're fishing and you're searching for fish on steep ledges and or you know just deep breaks, you can fish the creature spin. In those situations because you can move them faster okay does that make sense yeah okay let's see how this thing looks in the water you go right in ahead so you're gonna cast it out that's a plus what do you do? let it sink to the bottom I let it sink down it depends a lot of times when I'm when you know when I'm using a creature spin so let's say we're we're, we're fishing okay and I notice that we've got fish that are suspended Boy, you got some vegetation there, didn't you? Yeah. Let's say we got fish suspended at 12 feet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count that jig down in my head, you know, you know, roughly 11. You know, so you would, in your mind, you would sit there and go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. And then you get it down to about 10, 11 feet, and then you would crank it just like you just did right now. You crank so you give it. it like three quick cranks and then let it settle to the bottom. Exactly. And then and all then, the way back to the boat. Sometimes you might put two just to give it a little bit of a vary of action. It'll take you some time to get used to it. But once you get used to it and, and you get your rhythm going, and like you just did, you just gave it a little twitch because you felt something. And so you, you just basically bounce it off whatever it was that you felt yeah. and got it off. There you go, crank. And that's all you gotta do. And like I said, all of a sudden you'll just feel the jig pick up and you set the hook. I'd love to see that happen to you right now. <laughs> That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Key thing is again, like we were talking, if you when you're fishing these, the ones with just the plain tails, the lizard, the twin tail, the big giant curly tail, you wanna fish those in cold water conditions. Cold water conditions. And, and you're usually when you're in cold water, you're fishing rockier areas with some, maybe some timber, bridge pilings. When I fish in the rivers, we fish a lot of bridge pilings. These baits work excellent. 
you know, in those in, in those situations. Catch it right up to the bridge. Exactly. If you're fishing in late summer, early fall, and you're fishing post frontal conditions, you can't beat that creature spin. That's a tough bait to beat. You'll catch fish. And look, look at this action of this thing. When you rip it, rips, spins, just like a bucktail. When it falls down, that blade just spins and falls. It's just a great action. So next time when you're, you know, listen, I love medusas. When I'm fishing flats, when I'm fishing flats in an area, I love a medusa. When I'm fishing steeper ledges, I fish bulldogs. I mean, it's so simple, you know. Different tool for different applications. Exactly. Everything is. But in, 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 late, in, in late fall, cold weather conditions, these jigs right here, and if you're fishing post funnel conditions in the late summer, early fall, it's hard to beat these creatures. Mm -hmm. What did you say, Jason? Exactly. I think that's it for all about the creatures. If you guys want to see more videos of Rich, leave a comment below. And see you on the next adventure. Ah!